Hello. It's Wednesday. I'm knocking just my over. Just immediately hit your microphone. Just <laughs> bigger, 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 <laughs> knocking over everything. <laughs> Hi there. This is Lon. This is Emma. I'm Eric. We're going to talk about Andor episode eight. Full spoilers if you haven't seen it. Here's your warning. Three, two, one. Wow, that was a loud opening of a soda. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm harsh. Yeah, that was a crack in a soda. Uh, three, two, one. Full spoiler zone. We're now talking about Andrew episode eight called Nakina Five. What did you guys think? After the prison. After I was going to say, yeah, Nakina 5 was a prison. For a while, I was no. like, who is Nakina? And why is there a 5? I haven't seen the first <laughs> four. Truly, so yeah, I missed the first it. four Nakinas, but no, truly, yes. that made a lot of sense. Uh, this is such a dialogue-heavy episode. Wow. Uh, and it's the longest one. <laughs> truly, the whole episode was talking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I was absolutely enraptured by... The entire thing. I will say that uh, Miro and Cyril finally like having their moments together. Right. The dynamic between the two of them is absolutely delicious. I Cyril to me is like a Javert. You know what I mean? Like in in um, Les Misérables, where sure. it's just like he is in his mind so lawful good in a way that I haven't seen in a character in Star Wars since um oh my gosh in rebels he's the he's the one with the sideburns come callus? on callus yeah. yes Thank God. he has a little <laughs> so bit of a callus vibe right? to oh me and and callus is one of my absolute favorite star wars characters so i love this i cannot wait to see where cyril's journey goes uh i i i love cassian being resistant to being part of the rebellion and now being in a prison with this really cool dynamic between all the guys that work at table five. I didn't yeah. even know Andy Serkis was going to be in yeah, the show. No, I didn't, I didn't no, know. Yeah. I was so surprised. What is happening? Uh, yeah, no, the show is great. I love it. I, it's, uh, I'm delighted. <laughs> this was, this was like, I mean, I, I agree with everything I yeah. just said. Brilliant show. Love the episode. Mm. This was scary in a way that I think Star yeah. Wars Star Wars is not usually. Like, Star Wars is usually scary in, in, in that way of, like, it's, like, creepy and there's yeah. bad guys mm -hmm. and it's, like, dark and sort of moody. It can be scary that way. Or even, like, the Rogue One, like, Darth Vader throwing all the guys around. Like, that's kind of a horror-tinged sequence. But this is, like existentially unsettling in a way that I don't think we've seen from Star Wars before, where it's like the nightmare of being trapped in this prison. Right. And it isn't just, yeah. this is a prison and it's really bleak and the Empire sucks, which I no. think would be normally where Star Wars caps it. They really want you to zero, and you get a lot of shots exactly like this one, perfect yeah, screenshot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, where it's, it's registering on Cassie and where he is and what he's facing. Yeah. It's six years or more of this <gasps> mm -hmm. unending. Uh, and I, I mentioned before we went live, there's a there's an animated film this year called Mad God that is sort of like another take on this kind of like the existential nightmare of like being constantly trapped at work and you only exist to be a cog in this like capitalist nightmare machine bureaucracy. And I think this episode just visually, because there's not, there's there are, it is dialogue heavy, but there's Cassian barely talks in this yeah. episode. There's a lot of just him taking in this world that he's now finds himself trapped in and it's so suffocating it's so stifling it's such it's so it's so horrible uh and it really it's very viscerally effective yeah i i love when star wars does horror and this is a kind of horror that they haven't necessarily explored yet as right. you say lon the sort of existentialism of it all and just being trapped in the system i used to do a star wars live play uh type tabletop role-playing game for right. a number of yeah. years and i GM'd, I guest GM'd an episode that took place in a prison facility. Mm -hmm. And so this was just so joyful to me because I feel like it had, I mean, I did sort of like a, a Resident Evil does Star Wars kind of thing where sure. like mm -hmm. some testing had gone wrong. But otherwise it was so reminiscent to me of that kind of level of fear and oppression and bureaucracy that I was trying to imbue in my own storytelling. Right. So that I just, yeah, I, I it love it. Uh, it was really when uh, Kino uh -huh. Loy, Andy Serkis, yes. yeah, I did not know he was going to be in this. Uh, uh, he's, I hope he's young Snoke. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but the fact that he, um, he calls young it the game. Snoke. Yes. And that's the very, like, I, I yeah. mentioned last week that um, this leans into, like, uh, the show visually. We mentioned THX 1138 and kind of that early 70s yeah. sci fi. But even the fact that you kind of, the more you find out about what they're doing and the fact that, because at first it seems like, well, they have to work at this factory. This will be horrible and, like, just 
this thing they have to do, but no, it's like, it's really sadistic because anyone who comes in last gets this electrocution thing happening. Right, yeah. yeah. So it's like, the more you learn, they the more you realize you how awful it is. Uh, the, thematically, it too, <laughs> just, it, it's so, I mean, the Gilroys and their conceiving of this world and how they're scripting it and, and the way they've thought through all these elements, it, it's really tight, it's really smart. So if you think about, like, thematically, like, they're grabbing, this is how the Empire grew to be the Empire. They're grabbing these people randomly, they're charging them with BS crimes, nonsense, right. so that they can feed the war machine, they can keep, we don't know what Cassie's even building, it's some kind of weapon, I think we can presume, mm -hmm. something Imperial that they're going to use to blast people. And, uh, and you know, so that they'll have more prisoners building more weapons, allowing them to arrest more people on more worlds to bring in more prisoners to build more weapons. And, like, that's how you become the Empire as we see it in the rest of the trilogy. And also, they're baking in this idea of, like, because we do, we live in a world where there is, like, prison labor and, like, yeah. all of these things are real situations that they're kind of <laughs> living. We live in, we live a, in society, a society. As some might uh, say. But all, all of this is sort of, there, there's real stuff. It's Star Wars. It's yeah. fantasy. But it is sort of, like, taking our reality and, like, reflecting it back at us in some ways. And I think that, that the way that Andy Serkis is a prisoner but also embodying the capitalist yeah. mindset Oh, yeah, and he's, he's like, like, I get to make the rules. And, yeah. Right. Like, he's he's on one layer, but he's got masters, and they've got masters. And you realize the Empire is being sadistic by giving him that power, because then he'll and it's play this, with yeah. that power. And, yeah. And then again, just like we keep backing up, and it's just this endless sea of cubicles. It's this endless sea of lines of guys waiting yeah. in line at the prison. It, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's an endless hierarchy, too, because there's people above Andy Serkis and people above him. Miro is, a, Cyril's afraid of Miro, Miro's afraid of her boss. Her boss is afraid of his boss. And it's just fear all the way up until you get to literally Palpatine. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, who's uh, He's a crafty guy, that Palpatine. I did like seeing that scene um, with Mon Mothma and all the senators talking about, like, you know, Palpatine, he overreacts. Yeah. <laughs> like, like they're, well, I, and I they're trying to put into these mundane I, I liked terms. The, yeah, well, and that was the thing was that I did like the... Uh, underlying sense of danger though even from the senators recognizing that palpatine is perhaps overreaching right, a little right, uh right. and and that there is this level of they are all fundamentally aware of the fact that maybe palpatine bad but they're all just like no 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 but our lives it's are fine good. our yeah. lives yeah. are good so we're just gonna we're going to buy into this system. We're going to maintain the status quo. But then you have Mon Mothma on the other side of it. And her husband makes this sort of joking remark about this policy that she's trying to get votes for, that she is trying to protect the empire from the emperor. But, like, she really is on a much deeper level. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, and, uh, and it's I mean, good. Like, yeah, it's a lot of the, the same kind of thing we were talking about with Kino Loy. It, it's that everybody, like, that's... By, by slowly ratcheting up the tension, by slowly making things more oppressive, the Empire brings all these people, it creates allies. Like, now they're they're part of the oppressive force with it, whether they realize it or not. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. that's, I think, a lot of, you know, what Luthen keeps saying is, like, we need to make people more aware of what they're agreeing to. You yeah. know, like, we need to make this more stark so that people actually do rise up instead of just exactly what the senators are doing going like well listen maybe they're going a little far but security it's important you know? and, and it's that whole uh, you know so we got the I, I can't remember if they mentioned this the name before but in this one they said it a couple times the PORD the public order resentencing right, directive yeah. which are basically these new rules that basically like like we saw last week the like you know sort of judge dread like yeah. you know instant sentencing like you know just, right uh, and the fact that like to build the war machine up but also reactionary because of what Cassian helped do. But, you know, yes, there's obviously a lot of real world analogies as far as like what we saw after, you know, 9-11 yeah, with the like Patriot how Act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you're obviously supposed to think of that. And I think that that fascinatingly too, like that was introduced right after Aldani, the idea yeah. that we don't even know all of the network effects this is going to have. You know, mm -hmm. like this is going to cause them to crack down on people. And the prisoners mention it this yeah. time that it came, it made their lives harder. It's making all kinds of lives harder for people who had nothing to do with the Aldani heist. Yeah, uh, yeah. That weren't even they weren't even thinking about at the time. Well, which Cassian sees firsthand here because when he's in the prison, they're telling him right. everything yeah. just got worse because of this thing that happened, you know? Right, and they even know that it was like there was some big attack or they raided some, you know? Yeah, yeah. but I do like what you mentioned about like how Cassian barely spoke in this episode and he's taking it all in. Now, again, we've talked about these three-episode arcs. 
I'm assuming next week he prison break happens because I was like noting yeah. he was like well the, we got it we're in, this was two of three so yes. next yeah. week we gotta have a <laughs> we gotta action. climactic this this three episode arc and, somehow and the things we gotta, he was noticing he noticed them say they're short staffed to level four when right. that guy came in late he noticed yes. the two guys sign languaging that there's something going on yes. and how many people there are. So, yeah, it's like, okay, how will all this information... Yeah, no, I mean, I, I do... I, I was mentioning, like, we get a lot of close-ups yeah, on Cassie's yeah. face. The, I do think it's both. You're, you're, yeah. he, it's, he's, it's anguish, it's fatigue, it's terror, but it is also he's yeah. clocking everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I think you're, you're, there are also shots that, you know, like, oh, okay, he's seeing how this whole place works yep. so that next week he and a few other these other guys are yeah. probably going to... It's gonna be the it's gonna be the table five revolution. Yeah, no, <laughs> although they asked a lot of us on the show, we were joking about when they first introduced uh, Vel's gang of rebels. Like, I can't remember these people's names, and now we're like, they they said everyone's oh, name. I yeah, I don't. And I was I like, remember. I'm not remembering. All I don't remember a single name. Most of you are probably gonna die next week trying to mm-hmm. escape. Yeah, I don't. Think uh, we yeah, we I don't. I, I just remember there was that one nice guy that when they tried to refer to him as some sort of like newbie or yeah. dismissive kind of nickname, he's like Keith. That, well, that's his name, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the guy who showed him his bunk is Jem. It's short Jem. for something, but yeah. Jem's yeah. memorable. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. I was just really proud of myself when, when Brasso showed back up. I was like, yeah. that's Brasso. <laughs> I remember Brasso. Well, that's because we think of only murders in the film. Uh, Brasso. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I was very happy. This to... takes the investigation <laughs> in an entirely new direction. Uh, I was very happy to see Brasso. I should have. I should have. Realize he'd be back yeah. because the end of the first three episode arc, when they show meaningful shots of everyone, yeah, they you showed get him. him. You show, you get yeah. Him. Yeah, 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 they showed him in the aftermath of yeah. that too. Uh, let's talk about that um, uh, with uh, going back to Ferrix more because last week we saw Bix and Marva, but only through Cassian's eyes, kind of. Right. This week it was more right. like, here's what's happening. It, it threw me a little. I was glad they explained that like Marva was trying to open a pipe. And to help rebels that she fell. Because at first, I'm like, why does she yeah, seem why so more sickly yeah. than yeah. last week? I mean, they still said she was sick. It still seemed like a big shift. But it was interesting to sort of see, like, okay, because I don't think we'd seen Bix and Marva together. They talked about each other, but we hadn't seen them. I'm not sure talk if to we'd other, seen we? them actually talk to each other. We, we certainly knew really. that they knew each other, and, right. and we'd heard both Brazo and Bix make references, I believe, to, Cath- to Cassian's. Mother, right? Who, yeah. Of also, course. my my feel on this this Ferrix community that we keep seeing is that it's not that large. They, no, it's, no, kind no, of, no. it's kind of a small outpost. So I yeah. feel like everybody there kind of knows each other. Right, right. right. Uh, but it is interesting to see, like, yeah, she's she said she said she's staying to be a rebel. She's very actively trying to do it, but it's like it's basically. But also, it's basically the thing about like. Oh, we're trying to get your sick mom into a home, but she doesn't want to go. Yeah, she's feisty. Uh, yeah. yeah. Was it the daughters of Ferrix? We learned she was the president of the daughters of Ferrix. Right. Yeah, they yeah. were some sort of like revolutionary group on. I didn't Ferrix even think they were a revolutionary or, yeah. group. I thought they were just like a probably a committee. You know, yeah, they're yeah. like yeah. I saw it as more like her her circle of like friends. And, mm, right. Like, I saw right. it as like so those are her women's voting rights. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. yeah, something like that. But they yeah. were like, oh, maybe she can move in with them, but it's like no, or someone from mm-hmm. them, but she wouldn't mm-hmm. want to do that. Yeah, no, she's yeah. Um, she's and then we got um, we got Vel and Cinta. It is funny when uh, we, everyone. We, I mean, I'm very guilty of this myself. We all get so ahead of ourselves. So it's like Cinta last. We saw one shot of Cinta like trying to sneak away as that Star Destroyer it was like, oh, is it going to be a whole Cinta trying to escape? It's like, oh no, yeah, no she just got she's out. Fine. She's, she's fine. fine. <laughs> she's fine. We didn't need to see that. <laughs> she got to Vel. Um, uh, first of all, it is nice that they weren't being coy anymore. That they're a couple. No, you know? yeah, <laughs> so, I really enjoyed that. I still yeah. want them to kiss, and I know that's never going to happen. But I did really appreciate that in this particular episode, yeah. they did talk about how they love each other and they and like, are together. Yeah, wanted to be and, together. Yeah, and like, yes, yeah. They, they, made it, they made it formal. Yeah, and, but also that, that, you know, they both take this very seriously. And I, I mean, I think we learned in the, in the previous episode that, you know, Vel comes from some kind of family. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, references the idea here that she's a rich girl running away from her family. And, yeah. and you know, and, and Cinta saying like, oh, there's a room for Let. And, and Vel being like, we can't stay there. And she's like, no, we can't, but I can. The two of us together will be too conspicuous. And ultimately it's like, yes, we have endured a lot, but we always knew that the cause came first. Right, right. right. The way they drop the Vel is from a prominent slash wealthy family makes me feel like there's another shoe coming there. Like we're gonna, yeah. we, we would know the last name if we or, or even if we don't know the name, it could connect to like 
a senator on Coruscant. That's or what I mean. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like I feel like there's a there's a there's some. Mm -hmm. it, it was too pointed in the conversation to just be like background character. Right. Yeah. Like it but, feels like we're gonna be like, oh, this is Vel's dad. Um, the, the show. No. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm I kidding. think a strength of the show <laughs> that I get would might frustrate some is like that it does like it, both. Sometimes it shows the mundane, but also it shows just kind of like. Sometimes it shows people going in circles on purpose to kind of so it's very fun. like everyone wants to find Cassian but they're like watching each other as they're trying like yeah. no one knows where he is right and so it's like Bix is trying to find him while Vel and Cinta are watching her to see if she knows how to get to Cassian and she's calling Kayla trying to reach out to Kayla right. yeah and, and, and what's so I think what's so smart about it we're cutting from all these scenes especially the Empire where they're all talking about yeah. how Cassian is this you know they're got there, it's his picture and yeah. they're showing it to everybody. And yet, something as simple as him giving a fake name on the beach when he got arrested mm -hmm. is thwarting. Like, that's how hard it is to mm -hmm. run the empire. It's mm -hmm. like, on one planet, if one guy gives you a wrong name, he's in the system wrong, and that's it. You're still like, that doesn't matter how well organized you are. He said his name was Keith over there instead of Cassian, so right. now he's like, lost. Well, and, and technically, his name's not even Cassian. He was yeah. born Cassian, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? It's exactly. like, he's been using it, fake it, names it, for so long. It, 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 it's like, uh, they, they've got this system that they... It, it's like it's orderly on one level, but yeah. it's a galaxy. What it's are you going to do? It's a galaxy, and I thought about that a lot. And let's talk a little bit more about the Miro and Cyril scene because uh, when he's trying to remember mm. what Luthen looked like, and it's like oh, yeah. trying to describe, like, it's not like they're describing a galaxy. Yeah, I was like, going to well, say, he's, got a cape. he's like a white guy in a cape. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a, a white cloak. guy in a cape. They're cloak. all white guys yeah, in yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, that's, well, that's. that's you know? <laughs> does not narrow it down. Right, that doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> yeah. um, and her kind of being like, okay, this guy can't really help me. But I really liked at the end of that scene because we, you know, we a lot of people have been excited for like seeing these two characters come together mm -hmm. is his little smile at the end because he knows and we know they're not done. Like she will find something else for him to do. Of or course, come back to yeah. Him. yeah. Well, I mean, this is the thing is that there you sort of see him again. I think that him coming at it and filing all of these reports on Cassian. Yes, he is trying to get noticed, but he's trying to get noticed because he's like, look at how good I yes. am at my job. Whereas Miro, she's like really got her own agenda going on, I think, in a way where she is actually much more ambitious than he is. Like Cyril, again, it comes from a like, to me, this is the law, this is what's good and right, and I'm gonna uphold it at any cost. Right. And she's more like, hmm, I could use this guy to my advantage to get ahead. Yeah. Which they've made it clear that she's had to fight very hard to get ahead yeah. as it right. is. I think, yeah, I think it's definitely more, she's more of a schemer and it's more like a grand level ambition. I think we've seen Cyril's motivation, which is yes. to not end up back at home with mom. Like, yeah, I, think yeah. much more, I don't think he wants to be like the emperor's right hand and no. run the galaxy. I think it's really, it is like a job and he's mad that he lost out on this job that he had that was a good job and that he had to, he was embarrassed that he had to go move. And and I think, uh, you know, it's the the serial story is like it's fascinating. It's a level of Star Wars society we don't often see. We often see, you know, very poor people, like yeah. the people who are being abused the mm -hmm. most by the Empire at the bottom. And have or the we most see, reason to rebel. Right. Yeah. Or we see the very, the wealthiest, yeah. the Mon Mothmas, the, the Canto Bite, you know, yeah. people. Mm -hmm. But th like... Cyril is like from this sprawling Coruscant middle class. Yeah, yeah. Like they live, it's not a terrible apartment, but it's an apartment, yeah. you know? Like, and like, he, you know, he lives with, it's, it's, he, he still has to like fight and claw and like his whole life has been leading up to like, you go to school and you work hard and you get a good job with the empire and you're a civil servant. And then like to have that taken away, that was his motivation. It's not like I'm gonna be Darth whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, I needed this job and that's what's keeping me out of my mom's, you know, my mom's house. Um, uh, the uh, uh, one part I really liked, well, first of all, I liked the line when Cyril said to her, can one be too aggressive in preserving order? Because again, these are two very fascinating characters, but of course they're ultimately empire, they're fascists, they're mm -hmm, like, yeah. and they're both like, they do both want to keep the imperial machine going for their own reasons, mm -hmm. for their own motivations. Right. Well, I mean, they, they, were invested they in, believe in, in yeah. it. And, and I mean, I think that is part of what the show is saying too, is that, well, when that is the, the way things are done, when that's the order of society, yeah, a lot of people are just going to go along with it because that's the way things are. Totally. Like, like that yeah. you have a lot of first mover advantage when you're the empire yeah. at this point because you already exist. 
Well, and that's why it's interesting because it sets Cyril up to, again, like he's somebody who just really believes in the system. Right, yeah, he bought into it. He yeah. really bought into the system. And so that puts him in a really fascinating position to potentially down the road come to a different understanding of the system. Right. I'm not saying that's going to happen. It could go either way. It's either he leans fully into it or he gets his eyes open to it and it rocks his world. And then he still has a decision to make one way or another. Right. So again, it's it's setting up some very rich character-driven story points, which is, has really been a strength of this show in general. Yeah. Um, a great uh, Miro moment I also want to mention was at the very, well, not the, quite the very end, because this is Andor, so they had to end on a Monday night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah they like, could have oh. ended on Dix and Trouble. <laughs> but that I know. For a second, together. I thought they were going to end on Dix and Trouble, and then they're like, no, no. hey, do you remember Saw Gerrera? <laughs> no, no. But I loved, uh, well, no, that had already happened. It was the, the yeah. final oh, yeah. thing. Yeah, it was yeah. just them putting one more. It was just them yeah, putting yeah, it yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, but the, the Bix and Miro scene, um, just I really liked um, that uh her the theater of them saying, "Oh, should we clear the room?" And sort of saying, "No, I want her to see him." But then the room they bring her and going, "Get this man out of here!" Yeah, like right. she just it's wanted all, to see a guy sure. she knew, yeah. her friend, yeah. in duress. Uh, to, you know that it was just those little touches. I think yeah. the show does well. But let's go. We we uh, sorry, William. You had saw up on the uh, screen. Let's yeah. let's go back to saw. <laughs> Uh, the poor gullet, he didn't, uh, he didn't I did now, I, I presume somewhere on this show we're going to see what happens to him. Like, why he's so, why he looks so much more jacked up. I mean, I, I don't know if we will or we won't, because I think... this covers everything yeah. up through Rogue One. Yeah, but the way they're going to leap ahead, I think he could... We might see him again, and he'll be more messed up. Yeah, I, think the idea I, mean, yeah. I, I feel like we're... Because I'm now trying to remember how messed up he was when we saw Rebels? him in Rebels. Same here, yeah. And I feel like it was more messed up because than Re this. Because that was probably a year or two after this, the event Right, that but episode. not as messed up as yeah. Rogue One. My, my assumption, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, and I'm, I don't know the, 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 the character that well. My assumption was just coming in like, oh, okay, this is when we first see him, so he was like basically Forrest Whitaker with some scars. And then, like, if we see him, like, three or four more times, I'm assuming progressively... Yeah, no, I think, I think that's what it will we'll be. We'll follow his downfall until he gets to Rogue One and he's really messed yeah, up. Yeah, because mm. it felt like, we'll see, this could be the only time we see him this season, because uh, it was an interesting scene in that it was really showed the the how hard it is to bring these div different rebel groups together. Yeah. I, I don't think this is the last time we're going to see well, this Maybe season, this season. Uh, I don't no, know. I don't. I, I don't think you have this scene unless you've got yeah, you, you payoff in like right, 10 right, right. or 11, you know? But like, it yeah. definitely showed, uh, yeah, it's like we, we know that there's these different rebel pockets. Right. But yeah. like, but Saw, especially, I mean, Saw has uh, been described as sort of an extremist. So he's like, well, I'm fighting for this very specific reason. So I don't want to work with these other people who have their own reasons for fighting the Empire. They should want to fight him for my reasons. And and by the way, I love Rogue One. It's one of my favorite Star Wars mm -hmm. movies. I don't think Saw Gerrera works in that movie. <laughs> I don't get his deal. I don't get why he's like, I'm just going to stay and die now. After he yeah. seemed to be like so hardcore about yeah, it, it's, fighting. But this is interesting. But I no, this this, yeah. this I thought was very interesting. And I, and also it was it was akin to the way we saw the character utilized again in Star Wars Rebels, yeah. who he basically shows up at the point that they are bringing all of those rebel cells together to kind of form a unified rebel alliance, which is kind of where we leave everything at the end of Star Wars Rebels. So again, we're now predating this and we're still seeing Saw Gerrera very set in his ways. He's still pretty set in his ways in yes. Rebels. Yeah, yeah. And it's only by Rogue One that we like kind of see him tangentially involved in it. And as you say, Eric, that there's a lot of stuff with him that doesn't really make sense in Rogue One, but... He is interesting as a character at this point in the rebellion. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, it's also. I mean, again, I, I think one thing I keep coming back to is how much more deeply I feel like this show, in some ways, has really thought about revolutions and the mm -hmm. history of rebellion and how they really play out as opposed to the fantastical versions that we get yeah. in sci-fi and fantasy and really thinking about it in a in a specifically political way. And that yeah, that that speech that Saw gives where he's listing off. You know, this group, yes. separatists, and they're neo-Republicans, and here's what they... And it really is a very specific color of critique of the left and how left politics work and how it's always splintered, it's always yeah. very divided. And But but in both ways, I don't think it's just, like, criticism, because it's also saying, well, but the people who are, like, Luthan on Stella and Sarsar said, then you don't really have any direction. It's like, well, we right. don't like what the system is, but then what are you left with? when it's done and it, it, now it's just chaos. And so I think the ability to kind of see it from both of these characters' sides and like look at it as what if this 
Space Rebellion was a real rebellion. No, yeah. <laughs> How, what would they have to deal with? And it's like, this is exactly the kinds of stuff they'd have to deal with. It's really, it's thoughtful and, and very smart. No, I mean, we, I think we mentioned before because they, they'd mentioned Separatists before on this show and, mm-hmm. and just liking the idea that if there was a giant war over Separatists, those people wouldn't just be like, okay, I'm okay now under the Emperor. And so, yeah, the idea that he doesn't want to work with Anto Krieger. He does not want to work with Anto Krieger, who's a separatist. Mm -hmm. And then you think about, well, Mon Mothma fought against the separatists. Right. But she's against the emperor. So the idea that these people have to be like, you know what? We got to put those. Right. Well, I mean, separatist and neo-Republican in Star Wars politics would be opposite ends of the spectrum. You know, like you're trying to reform the old republic as it was. But those were the groups that wanted to splinter off from it. Yeah. Well, and then, and and again, that is something that like thematically in some of the Star Wars novels that take place in between the original trilogy and the new trilogy, like they explore that as well. Like I think very specifically about um, Claudia Gray's Bloodline, it's where they're talking about, you know, we're basically like Leia is dealing with the fact that, you know, you're you're more sort of like liberal kind of senators mm. that kind of want to all have their own governments right. instead of mm. ending up in another kind of empire situation. So it's yeah, it's yeah. It, it, it is very it as you say, it is truly a a criticism. It's not even a criticism, it's just a realistic look at real world politics. Your people who are more liberal are always because again it it comes from the place of it's like well we we trust people to live their lives in a way that isn't harming anybody else so like let's just live leave everybody to live their lives but the people on the other extreme are all like we're going to adhere to this one extreme which in this case is the empire so yeah yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's it's too <laughs> real <laughs> yeah no it's it's really cool how it, adds. <laughs> it adds these complications that yeah feel very real uh feel very earned uh, i also really liked um the scene with Kayla and Luthen, just because, you know, Kayla, they, their front is he owns this store and right. she's his assistant. But we see, like, their dynamic is not like she just does what he says. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she's nah. really challenging him and, like, the whole, like, uh, I'm not slipping thing yeah. uh, about, like, you know, make sure that your priorities are in the right place. Yep. Make sure that you're seeing the big picture. Yeah, there. and I mean, the conversation that she has with him where she's like, hey, like, we needed that plan to work. So... We hired Cassie and Andor. Everything on Aldani went as we hoped it, you know, we succeeded. Yes, there were heavy losses, but we succeeded, and we just have to leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Because he's trying to reach out and find Cassian because he's worried because Cassian knows who he is. But ultimately, it's like Cassian's just kind of on Cassian's side right now. <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, I, I, again, it's like there, it provides a real, human level to every single one of these people. And it's one of those things that I do really like about Luthen is that ultimately he does really care about individuals, potentially to his own detriment. Yeah, yeah. But he's so uh, big picture oriented, yep. you know, in that he's like, look, we need the Empire to oppress us yep. more. Yeah, you know, that will be, uh, that is how we find our ultimate yep. success. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Uh, let's go do AMA in a, in a minute, but first uh, we'll just say thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't to our channel. Uh, coming up, uh, so I know I lied to you guys. I lied to you. So we're going to have the House of the Dragon uh, chat on Monday. We <laughs> end. I'm sorry. Uh, but next week uh, we have already revealed that uh, House of the Dragon Honest Trailer. Yes, is that's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. We're, we're doing the uh, the Honest Trailer. So we'll, the, the Tuesday Honest Trailer commentaries yes. will also be Spencer, Danielle, and I giving our diving into dragon it. hot take. Dra- diving into all things all the dragon house the all things class. dragon yeah. um, and then uh, actually and then we'll have more Andor for you in the next few weeks sure I'll be there too um, and then I want to actually it's funny as we're talking about House of the Dragon I did want to mention one other thing about Mom Mothma which is we got a little snippet of more of her backstory which is that she and Perrin got married when they were 15 uh, so yeah. I actually already knew that um, there was some conversation uh, after that first episode mm-hmm. when Mon Mothma revealed, or that, that sort of like l- first collection yeah. of episodes where she revealed that she was married. And I think we first 
met him and were like, oh, I really wanted her to have like a cool supportive partner of a husband, right. but that's not what he was. And there was some explanation. It's probably something that already existed within Star Wars I canon think that it was I wasn't mentioned aware in a of. book or something. Yeah, yeah. that it's that it, it is very uh, traditional on the planet Chandrilla. Chandrilla. Yeah, yeah. To, yes, yes. to be put into, if you're like in a wealthy family, yeah. you're like basically put into these uh, an arranged, arranged marriages at like 15. Yeah, and so that felt, uh, we mentioned this show had some other Game of Thrones compared as far as like the politics part yeah. that also felt like yeah. the fact that like she's kind of living this miserable um personal life yeah. with this schmuck of a guy that you know when she was 15 it's like you shall be married because you're both rich people who are going to Coruscant together and then also her she became a senator at 16 but that tracks with uh Padme. Yeah, that's how I was like. That's how they do it on Naboo as well. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Trusting their yeah, young. They got, young they got women. some interesting, yeah. you know, stuff going on. Yeah. I want to mention. I saw one thing. I have to mention in the chat that mm. I loved, which is. Uh, Brett here says, what if Cyril ends up being the guy who operates the Death Star laser? <laughs> stand Aww. by, stand by. Yeah, I kind of do like that. Yeah, yeah, I do like that. <laughs> as far as like, he, I made it, Mom. I made We're going to see the origin of literally every, Death Star. every oh human God. being <laughs> in A New Hope. We will get a show. No, <laughs> he's going to call <laughs> his mom yeah. to brag, and then we're going to see uh -huh. it blow up. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm, I'm for that, is what I'm saying. Uh, Zeno Hour says, obviously Luthen's rebellion plan ends up working, yes, because we know eventually they're going to join together, mm -hmm. but doesn't intentionally causing pain and suffering on civilians make him an antagonist? I mean, well, it's, it's, we're getting caught up in the, the terminology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Antagonist would just mean he's the bad guy on this show, right. which he's not, because yeah. he's helping Andor and our heroes, right. so he's on the right side in terms of the 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 character map of this show. Mm -hmm. So he's not an antagonist. Now, is he a villain? That's up to you, my friend. <laughs> right, right. But I think honestly, I mean, from the second we met Cassian in Rogue One, and he shot a guy who was helping him but panicking um, because that guy would have yeah. talked. He felt right. Yep. Like it's the, these characters, the Gilroy side of things is this I, very yes, murky. I think, I think that's a lot of morally what, gray. What this yeah. whole show is about is that whether you are imper obviously better to not be in the Empire, better to be part of the rebellion. But even within that, we're talking about a spectrum. It's shades of gray. Nobody's a good guy or a bad guy. Sometimes doing the right thing requires you to do something terrible mm -hmm. you don't want to do. Uh, let's see. Um, I do like both Zeno Hour and Alan Preslin said young Snoke confirmed. Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean that how could that not be your first thought when he right. shows like He's, I've seen, wait a minute, there's a jar with this when, man. When he, when, when he finishes those 200 and something days left, they're like, you did a great job. Yeah, we and just Palpatine need, wants to meet with you. We just need a little sample right. of your blood, <laughs> right. put it in this jar. Yeah. Jars of Snoke. <laughs> that's, oh, that's how we got the first Snoke jar. To Jars of Snoke. Um, lots of theories on what they're making from Death Star parts. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed you oh, said that. Yeah. To um, Brent Gerard saying maybe it was an adapt or ATST yeah. part. Yep, it's yep, some, yep. something with a with a very specific military yeah. uh, use. Something I that's think. part of the war machine. Right, I think. Yeah. So. Darth Relum asks, who is paying for the labor it would take to build some of the facilities in the Star Wars universe? Uh, yeah. Well, they're not paying for labor. It's the prison <laughs> right, right. system. So, uh, right, it's unpaid labor. And, and, and they're ramping that up. Maybe it was a split <laughs> in the past, but you, know, you get the feeling. Yeah, I like... mean, somebody has to be paying for the facility itself but they're not paying for labor they're forcing prisoners to do it and they are also forcing a bunch of people into prison who haven't actually committed right. any crimes and like cassian had no sort of trial whatsoever yeah. he witnessed some sort of rebellion riffraff happening and they went okay great you're part of it let's go right. yeah. i mean you gotta bear in mind as we learned from last jedi and like the canto bite sequence like there there is a huge war industry the, yeah. the, the, the sort of military yeah, there's a lot industrial of war going complex on. is huge in star wars and a lot of whole planets economies are owning these facilities mm -hmm. that build these parts that they then sell to the um, you know. Yep. And yeah. it's taxes, I would assume. Uh, a couple board. people actually, uh, SG, SG uh, Rapness and Bridger here, both suggest that Vel could be Luthen's daughter. That tracks. I could, I could see the reveal that's a reveal to us, but not like he's been talking to his daughter the whole time. Sure. Uh, and, you know, and they're both part of this. I, I could see that. Yeah. That, that, would, that, would, that would make sense. He's I, wealthy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's uh, very, very uh, possible. Langley, M. Neely. It was just the way, like, screenwriter-wise, the way that it was dropped into the scene is like, I need you to know this because it's going to 
in like two episodes or three episodes. Like, yeah, hang on to that. Put, file <laughs> that. File that piece of information. Um, let's see. Uh, Langley M. Neely uh, agrees with you, Emma, that Cyril is Javert, totally obsessed and crazy for Andor, mm-hmm. trying to game the system. Yes! Oh, my Pen- God! <laughs> yeah. It's so true! Andor is his Jean Valjean! <laughs> yes. Oh, man, they should do a musical episode. Yes! He should have he stolen some bread then. I mean, honestly, <laughs> he didn't commit uh, any crime. He, uh, stealing he stole a loaf of bread An would... entire imperial payroll, yeah. okay? Um, actually, Langley Amelia also asked an interesting question. Uh, so, Tales of the Jedi came out today, and there's mm-hmm. a little bit of controversy around it. I really liked it, but there's a little bit of controversy because it's not the first time that they've a little bit retconned stuff from mm-hmm. books and comics Mm-mm-mm-mm. by, like, restaging things a little bit. Nerds, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's going to happen, you know. It, it will. Like, Even though they like, say it's all canon, sometimes gotta, they're going to be like, you gotta unclench. well, what if yeah. it's slightly You'll different? You'll enjoy yourself be- And so uh, Brent asks, I'm uh, oh, sorry, Langley asks, uh, do you think that they might uh, restage Mon Mothma's sort of big coming out speech that this is the you know, she's officially joining the rebellion declaration she made on Rebels? Might we get a version of that here instead? Uh, I don't know if it's so much of a instead as, as well, possibly. Yeah, I, yeah. I would imagine... I would be astounded if we didn't see it again. Mm -hmm. Do I think that they are going to retcon what happened on Rebels? No, No, I don't think so. It it will very likely uh, be sort of a back and forth. You know what I mean? Where Mm -hmm. it's like we're seeing whatever Cassian is up to and whatever activities Rebel-wise are happening with him, and it'll be interspersed with her speech that we saw in Rebels. I do think that especially in the second season of this, as we get closer to Rogue One, where we already got some Rebels of or some Easter eggs, rather, of Rebels characters. You know, we see Chopper roll through that one scene, yeah. and we hear General Sindula called over the sort of intercom system at the Rebel base. You know, I think we will see some some really interesting crossover with Rebels. There's also the version of it where, uh, because as much as I would be hyped if they would cast, if they had Zeb sitting oh there, God. all those people, I don't know if Tony Gerber wants to do that. No. But there is the version of this where, like Order 66 is now something you can layer in and yeah, not show up with exactly. that. That's exactly. Hear people hearing her message. Yes, exactly. you, you, actually, yeah. you actually took the example I was going to use. I, I think now what, what we've seen them do before and what I feel like is going to be their kind of Captain mm-hmm. Kennedy's go-to move yeah. is uh, – that what happened in Rebels is now history. It's established. (laughs) We can't change it. That's what happened in that moment. But now we can see what was happening in other parts of the universe during that historical moment, reflecting the real, the history that we know of that Mm -hmm. was going on. So I think I think exa- exactly like Order 66, we wouldn't refilm Ian McDermott redoing that scene in a different way. No. But you could have people hearing it for the first time, listening to it, yes. or even just the audience knowing that it's happening and not even needing to hear it because we know that it happened. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it will be that. That seems like the way Gilroy's going about this as well. Is like right. I'm not rethinking the history of Star Wars. No. I'm just giving you this pocket of it. That you haven't seen before. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then uh, we'll end here on uh, Brent Rahir's question. <clears throat> Between Mon's alliance building, Cassian's personal journey, Luthen's sabotage planning, and Deidre and Cyril's hunts, which of the storylines are you most invested in at this point? Ooh, <laughs> I'm Team question. Cyril. I love him so much. I really do. I just, yeah, I, 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 I and especially his dynamic with Deidre, I think, is so interesting. And it's thrilling to be so excited by a Star Wars villain because a lot of them are on the mustache twirly side. Yeah. Uh, and that is not the case with yeah. these characters at all. Uh, yeah, I love it. I, I, I think their storyline is so interesting. And, I'm, and I also love all the like surface level versus what's actually happening underneath in the Mon Mothma storyline. That's just, yeah, it's, it's subtle. It's complex. Uh, and Genevieve O'Reilly. Oh, it's so nice to see Mon Mothma in some killer fashion. <laughs> <laughs> there will be lots of cosplay. Yeah. She looks so good. <laughs> Fav- a favorite storyline? Uh, I mean, I I love political history. Uh, kind of, you know, a little bit of a nerd for that stuff. That's what I studied in school a little bit. And so, yeah, like that stuff's re- like the way that they're layering that in, like the Luthan storylines and the stuff with him and Mon Mothma and uh, Ka- Ka- Kyla, Kyla, Kayla, Kayla. Kayla. Yeah. It sounds like uh, Leia. But yeah, it's not right. At first, <laughs> you're like Leia. Why yeah. would they name two characters Leia? That's confusing. Um, well, it's like isn't the daughter's name Leda? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of those kind of names. 
uh, I, I I think that stuff is so smart, and it's it, it's really they're late. It, it's not a focus. They, 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 we're not spending every episode on it. They're not overdoing it. It's just there in the background, and it's subtle, and it's happening. And this this idea of like yeah, all of these very disparate groups with these very disparate ideas coming together to form a rebellion, and the way that that's playing out in the background of this other show is is really brilliant. I yeah, I, I I think uh, I gotta say, even though I like all this stuff. The, the ISB stuff, Miro, and then Cyril Toe, who now, of course, is tied into that. I just, it's it's just, I really loved Krennic because he gave us that first glimpse of, like, middle management and stuff. Right. Yeah. And this is really exploring that, like, these, again, these are all sort of awful people for what their side they're fighting for, but, like, their politics, their dynamics. Uh, part of Gaz, he, 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 you know, spoke up for her again this week. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, uh, Val, uh, why, why am I forgetting uh, the character who, Mustache Man, uh, Yularen, yeah. Yularen. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, When he was being so critical, you know, he's like back in her. I just like, I really like seeing this side of the empire mm-hmm. uh, because they are the bad guys ultimately. But this is definitely, we have the time here to kind of explore yeah. a little bit more of that. Yeah, we're, we're seeing like the dynamic of the empire at work, but like in their like day to day sort of nine to five empire work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said I said this, uh, uh, Emma and I were talking earlier and I was saying how it's like, I'm so glad this show exists. It's so great. I also see, I think the more I see of it, the more I'm like, I think I see why this show went from five seasons to two seasons because this is not typical Star Wars. And if all Star Wars were like this, Star Wars wouldn't be that popular. No. Because it yeah. would be like, like, this is not for 10-year-olds and I'm so glad right. it's been made. Well, that, but... I, think, I, think that's a, I think that's a great point. And I think we, we, we tend to come away with this idea that, that a lot of these franchises are like, they're, they're one thing. Like, right. We've been seeing this a lot with, and I don't want to get into it. All, yeah. But we've been seeing this a lot this week with like DC yeah. films. And like DC comics movies are like this thing. And it's like DC comics movies could be like the League of Super yeah. Pets. Yeah. Or Zack Snyder's <laughs> Batman v Super, like they're they're, they're yeah. all a, over the it's map. It's a range. They yes. could be anything, and I think we we say things like that a lot. But then a lot of these franchises do everything kind of then hues toward the center. They play it kind of safe, and there is a sameness to it. Mm-hmm. And so Star Wars does have this ability to be mm-hmm. broad and very diverse in a range of genres. But but a lot a lot of Star Wars content then does kind of get smoothed out into being sort of samey. Mm-hmm. And this is not like typical Star no, Wars stuff at all. at all. And I, I agree, it would make no sense if all Star Wars was like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you'd really leave a lot of people are like, this is what they should always do. I'm like, they no, should, they they should always do. Though. But I'm as really a, glad they're doing it. Right. Yeah. But as a, a a side direction, a supplement. I mean, yeah. in the same way, like Star Wars Visions. Like, well, that yeah. wouldn't be what the main Star Wars thing is. We're right. going to do anime shorts. But as a <laughs> complement to the rest of it, it's terrific. Yeah. And, yeah. Think, and it yeah. is. It's it is fun to see something different and something that fully commits to being for adults and not in a in a shock value we're gonna have yeah. lots of graphic sex and violence kind of way they still didn't show us the butts of all those naked guys who I do yeah we went butts. to a bordello but we stayed <laughs> yeah, in the front yeah. room we stayed in the front room yes. but in its themes yep. uh in how interaction in how dialogue heavy yeah. it is yeah. Um, it's total. It's for grownups, and it's cool to see them be like, "We're not worried about making this appealing to twelve-year-olds. Right. This is a Star Wars for a particular kind of viewer, mm-hmm. and that is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Refreshing, yeah. even. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be excited when Mandalorian's back too. It's totally. All, yeah. sure. I all, like Mandalorian. Yeah. yeah, it can all exist. Yeah. Um, well, thank you guys. That's it for us this week. Uh, like we said, uh, look for the honest trailer for House Dragon next week, and then we'll be back here. Take care. Farewell. Star Wars. Bye. <laughs>